can never take me off the throne. I'm a warrior, the battle feels my home. I die for the cause that I fight for. I stay ready, prepare for war. You can't stop the pressure. I'm on another level. You can't stop the pressure. Spill the blood of the devil. Yeah, it's the right. Beautiful night for what should be a memorable game. And if you told us at the start of the season the Winnipeg Blue Bombers would be sitting here in week five unbeaten, there would have been no surprises. The BC Lions, meanwhile, have taken the league by storm. Two unbeaten teams, both with statements to make as we take you to the West Coast a little bit later. But first, right now, let's welcome you inside the CFL on TSN Studios. And guys, big games require bigger panels. <laughs> So, I like it. I like it. I like it. I am, I'm filling in for Kate Burnett. She promised me, Maddie, there would be food, barbecue. I hope you're cooking. <laughs> you got that checked out. That's right. Box. Along with Milt Stiegel, Matt Dunnigan, Davis Sanchez. Guys, yeah. it is the Blue Bombers at 4-0 and against the BC Lions at 3-0. and Guys, Davis, you told me I was easier on the eyes than Kate, so we'll start with you. What are you most looking forward to in this game? Uh, look, this is uh, Winnipeg's built a legacy. They're, they're building something special, what they've done the last couple of years. And BC, from a new owner to a new quarterback, mm -hmm. they're building something. Uh, sometimes games are just big enough where there's no more talking. I just want to see you kick this thing off and let's go. Yeah, yeah. I, I love what the young quarterback said. He says, B, uh, he says the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have what we want. Mm. And I say... Want some, get some, bad enough, take some. And tonight's their opportunity to go after, for the first time this year, many, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the defending Great Cup Richie champions. Hall has been a coach since 1994. He's seen every single offense, every single type of quarterback, but he's going to have to have a special game plan to stop this young man tonight. He's played well in those first three games. Let's see if he can do it in his fourth. Yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers absolutely are the big dogs of the CFL. The BC Lions, they are still small cats. They will try to grow up tonight. Two unbeaten teams will take you to BC Place when we come back. Nathan Rourke, what a great story. Down the left sideline, showing off the speed. Will he score? He will. Kick Canada is off and running. Back-to-back -back Great Cup champion and undefeated Winnipeg Blue Bombers. A look to the end zone, it's caught, and it's a touchdown Winnipeg. <laughs> that is the game of the week, absolutely. Nielsen, Glenn Suter, and Blake Price have the call. A beautiful Saturday in Vancouver, playing host to the most anticipated matchup of this young CFL season. It's the back-to-back -back Great Cup champs, the 4-0 Winnipeg Blue Bombers, visiting the new contenders on the block, Nathan Rourke and the BC Lions. And it is a BC place battle of the unbeaten. Thank you very much for joining us. This is exciting. It is, Dustin. I feel like a microphone should drop down between <laughs> us right now. We're standing in the middle of the ring. This is the main event, a heavyweight bout between two unbeaten quarterbacks in the orange corner with a 3-0 record standing 6 foot 2 209 pounds from Oakville Ontario the challenger Kid Canada Nathan Rourke in the blue corner the two-time defending champion standing 6 1 218 pounds out of Cincinnati the MOP Zach Kolaris round one coming up oh we got a lot on the go it's time here we go let's see BC Lions and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Neither team has lost yet this season. The Bombers won the toss and elected to take 
the football to get this game going. And we are underway in Vancouver. Janarian Grant takes it just inside his own 15. Near side of the field and an opportunity for some fireworks early. Grant down to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and he's going to take it all the way home to start the football game. Get out of here. Janarian Grant untouched for 97 and a touchdown. Woo! <laughs> Wow, what a start to this game. The quarterbacks haven't even entered the field yet. And we've got six on the board. What a run. And there's some blocking down the field as well. Wide side return and the speed of Janarian Grant down the sideline. Catches that cover team for the BC Lions. Setting their alarm a little late. It's game time. Uh, if it's a uh, heavyweight battle, the first blow has just been dealt in the opening wow. round. Wow. Early knockdown. Got to get up off the mat now if you're the BC Lions. Second time this season we had a kick return to start a game. Leggio out to make it 7 0. And he knocks it right through. And Winnipeg, 4 and 0 on the season, could not have asked for a better start here at BC Place. You know, every time Janarian Grant touches the football, there's the potential of this. He's got such great breakaway speed. We're going to see a couple of them. Lucky Whitehead for the Lions has the same type of top-end breakaway speed. But, man, he's untouched. Good blocking at the point of attack. Get him to the wide field, and then away he goes. Zach Kolaris doesn't even get on the field. They're up 7-0. As a quarterback, it's your job to provide the offense, but you get to stand on the sidelines and watch one of the best returners in the league give your team a huge start here on the road. BC Lions, uh, we saw the first couple of games of the season. They had things on cruise control, faced some adversity last week, and now find themselves down before Rourke has even had an opportunity to touch the football. Five kick return TDs this season, and we are only in week five. That's exciting. Well, a big part of the Canadian Football League is the return game, the special teams, punt returns, kickoff returns. The wide field gives these world-class athletes a chance to showcase their talents. And wow, Janarian Grant got this one out of the gate going. Let's go. BC Lions now with an opportunity to respond on their own. Back to the 30, up to the 40. And no further on the opening turn of the game for the Lions. And a look at that man, Nathan Rourke. Four and one in his career, three and oh this year. A thousand yards passing, nine touchdowns to just two interceptions, both last week against the Ottawa Red Blacks. But he had a real bounce back second half after the second interception. But Nathan Rourke off to just a remarkable start. 83.8% completion rate in his first three games, highest three game stretch in league history. He'll hand it off to his running back, James Butler, who's having a sensational start to the year as well. Let's take a look at this BC offense presented to you by Expedia. Yeah, it's gonna be a real challenge for Joel Figueroa and Kent Perkins, the two tackles. They're up against Jackson Jeffcoat, Willie Jefferson. That's always a tough task. This will be their greatest test. And how about Keon Hatcher, the guy that came into the league last year with Nathan Rourke, probably took a lot of reps with Rourke as the backup quarterback and a new receiver to the team. They're clicking early. Second and seven, Rourke has a completion and that will go for a first down to Dominique Rhymes. That's his league leading 10th second down reception of the season. Of course, no Brian Burnham. He's still out for a little bit due to injury with ribs and this offense continues to roll, which is remarkable, but they're spreading the ball around. To mention Keon Hatcher and Dominic Rhymes. And don't forget Lucky Whitehead in this lineup. Lucky Whitehead, no touchdowns yet on the season. He'd love one against the opponent here this evening. Rourke gets it to his running back, bounces loose and will be ruled incomplete after it was scooped up there by Casey Sales. Second and 10. 
This this was well covered. This is clearly that's clearly incomplete. But that was that was Diedrich Nichols that jumped that that little flare out. James Butler has been so involved in the offense. Don't be surprised to see them man up him. Make sure they get a body on him. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to want to check him. Over 300 yards of total offense on the season for Butler. Stands in there to the right of Rourke. Rourke near side. He's got a completion for another first down to Hatcher. So Hatcher and Rhymes coming up big on second down. This one 13 for Hatcher. Yeah, accuracy on this throw from the far hash. It's still, even with the hash marks moved in a little tighter, it's still a long throw that you need to be on time and accurate with in double coverage. And Nathan Rourke keeps it away from the bomber defenders. Look at that accuracy. Perfect throw. Hatcher now over 300 yards on the season after that huge game last week. Rourke again quickly, a completion. And that'll take it down inside the 40 as we take a look at this Bombers defense. Defense that ranks first in the Canadian Football League after four weeks in points allowed. And up front, Jeffcoat and Jefferson. Jefferson with an interception for a touchdown last week. Kyrie Wilson is out of the lineup tonight. Malik Clements will take his spot in the linebacking core. And back in the back end, Winston Rose pick six against Toronto in that win last week. Rhymes with a couple of catches for 15 yards. Three receivers to the left for Rourke. Looks to the right, throws to the right. And that ball was timed perfectly, and that'll go for a first down to Lucky Whitehead. There's Lucky Whitehead getting involved on that slant route. Bam, and inside. Pretty good coverage, but when the ball is thrown with inside leverage like this to Lucky Whitehead, it's almost impossible to defend. Mary Houston couldn't be in better position. Just got blocked out by the receiver. Rourke is four of five for 36 yards on this drive. Works first and 10 on the Winnipeg 30 against the Bombers defense that's given up the most passing yards per game in the league. Rourke looking for more, it's gonna be intercepted. Taken away just inside the 30. Jackson Jeffcoats comes up with it. And the Bombers defense does what they've done all season, and that is make big plays at big moments in a football game. And it's Jeff Coach dropping back, stepping in and taking it away. <laughs> you know what? You couldn't start a journey to a million bucks better than getting one to start a football game. You have the whole game to get number two. Let's go. Bombers offense steps on the field for the first time. They've got a return touchdown already and a big play by their defense already, which has given them a 7-0 lead. Zach Kolaris, outstanding win-loss record starting quarterback for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. All he does is win games, is his win championships, back-to-back -back championships. And boy, we've been talking a lot about Kid Canada here in BC, across the league. Zach Kolaris is still the king of the hill. Eight-yard pickup on first down to Oliveira. His longest carry of the season was 10. They're gonna feed him again, and this time with a good second effort, he's got what he needs for a first down. Let's take a look at the Winnipeg offense. Yeah, I didn't highlight any of the offensive line because I think collectively they just want to do better in the run game. They just want to get that run game going, get the balance in the offense back like they had the last couple of years. And that's been a little bit slow out of the gate. Their go-to guy is surprising. Dalton Schoen has become big play receiver. No Dembski in the lineup tonight. O'Leary Orange will play for him. Stone was a walk-on at Kansas State. Now he's here with the Bombers. Polaris underneath completion, and that'll be awfully close to another first down as he gets it to Wolotarski and gives us time to take a look at the BC defense. Tim Bonner up front, second year BC Lion. Couple of sacks on the season for him. Gets a good push in the middle. They're gonna need it against Zach Kolaris and his ability to escape. Bola Combo leads the team in defensive plays with 21 after three games. And TJ Lee got out of the gate. He's a leader back there in the back end and he got out of the gate in game one with two picks. Second and short, Drew Brown into the game to take care of business. And that is 
is what he does as the ball creeps towards the BC Lions 50 yard line. I'm really uh, one, of the, one of the topics of discussion with with all the attention on on Nathan Rourke and all his and, and justifiably so we haven't really talked about the BC defense that has improved tremendously from last year. I mean they have pretty much every major category have improved under Ryan Phillips, the defensive coordinator, who, who started to midway through last year, really had the job, but didn't have the title at the time. Allowing just 16.3 points per game is this defense. Ellingson on a deeper shot, and he holds it in. Fingertips got the job done there, and a big pickup for Greg Ellingson. Yeah, they got him inside to run the corner route. He catches the back half of the ball here. This is a big catch. Those gloves working well for Ellingson on this corner route. Working on Luchez Purifoy. He's got the separation, and then watch him catch the back half of the ball. Reaches out for a 28-yard gain and knocking on the door of the red zone. up just before he could get to that BC 20. Stanley Bryant wasn't happy with himself and this offensive line has been dominant through the last couple of seasons championship seasons. Saw him get up and just shake his head. They, they take pride in the run game and being those road graders up front. Did it for two years with Andrew Harris behind him. Now they want to get Brady Oliveira and Johnny Augustine going. Right, three-time most outstanding lineman in the CFL. Only got to do that. Second and seven. And we've got a whistle as Kolaris steps back. Wow, Drew Wolitarski was wide See Dirkman. Winnipeg number 53. Five-yard penalty remains second down. That's the veteran, Pat Newfeld. A little early movement there because... I'm not sure if, if the Lion defender saw that it was a penalty and the play stopped, so he stopped. But Wolitarski was wide open, and that's exactly where Zach Polaris was looking. But no play, second, a little more intent. Crowd here at BC Place trying to get behind this Lions defense. Seventh play of the drive for Polaris. Steps back in the pocket, and he's got a completion down inside the 15. Back to Greg Ellingson again. Lions drop off into the zone with three-man pressure, wanting to force Zach Kolaris to throw it into coverage. But watch how he freezes the coverage in the zone defense. See, stop it there, guys. He started out looking that way and then flips his head around. He knows that Ellingson's going to be sitting in that hole in the curl route. Drops it right to him. 14 yards to Ellingson. He's now over 300 on the season. Three receivers to the left for Kolaris. They're going to bring some pressure. Kolaris gets it away in time towards the corner. And it's caught for a touchdown. What a play on the far side of the field by Dalton Schoen as he went down and got it. Well, and a big play by Zach Kolaris to throw it around the rush. There was a free man off the edge for the Lions. They did decide to come with some pressure from this side. Kolaris sees it. Now he's got to get rid of it and throw it around that rush with the helmet right in his chest. He puts it outside so Dalton Schoen can go and get it. And he does just that. Bombers with a big early lead. Second touchdown of the year for Schoen working there against TJ Lee. And what a start for Winnipeg. All three facets of the game. Special teams touchdown, offensive touchdown, defensive interception, and another extra point to cap off. An eight play, 75 yard drive, and a perfect start to the game for that man. Zach Kolaris, four of four for 63 yards on the drive that ends in the hands of Dalton Schoen. Nice corner route here from Dalton showing on a veteran in TJ Lee and TJ Lee gets caught looking back in the backfield a little bit and his feet 
like they're in sand. He reaches out to try and get a jam, but Dalton Schoen goes right past that jam, and he was well past five yards. It was almost like T.J. Lee was looking to switch with one of his teammates. There was no switch, and then he got in a chase position, but you can bet that T.J. Lee will bounce back from that one. A nicely thrown ball by his quarterback. Beautiful. As well for Schoen. Around the rush. It right in there. Yeah, around the rush. Winnipeg. An excellent start on the road, looking to go to 5-0. They did that in 2019 as well. Shy Ross on the return, and he has nowhere to go. Gets it back up to about the 35-yard line. If there's one offense that can overcome a 14-point deficit, it's likely this one. 14-point lead by the Bombers, and their second touchdown because of the interception from Jackson Jeffcoat, who's at the right of your screen there. You're going to step up the field three steps and then drop underneath that crossing route. There is no way that Nathan Rourke knew that a defensive end the size of Jackson Jeffcoat was going to drop into coverage, but Richie Hall will do that. Second interception of the career for Jeffcoat. He'll hand it off to Butler, pushes it ahead up the middle just for a short gain on first down three yards, and that'll set up a second and seven for Rourke. You know, the two bookends, Willie Jefferson, Jackson Jeffco. Jefferson got it going last week with a pick six at home, and Jackson Jeffco off to a bit of a slow start by his standards. Still looking for a sack, his first sack of the season, getting some pressures. But the two are awful tough to block. So we'll watch the matchup between Figueroa, Perkins, Jefferson, and Jeffco. Second and seven for Rourke. Near side, and that one falls incomplete. He was looking for Pearson. Would have had enough for a first down. Looked like Pearson had a crack at that one and could not haul it in. Josh Pearson getting a chance to play with Burnham out as well. And Rourke puts it in the window. Can't throw it much better than that. You can see the defenders there. And Pearson's just got to squeeze the rock. Lutoff will kick it away to Grant, who took his first opportunity back all the way. Takes this one at the 20. Grant cuts it back up the middle. And you heard the crowd kind of <laughs> get a little excited there. Maybe I was guilty of it as well. Can't give that guy any space. Welcome back to Vancouver, everyone. Let's send it down to Blake Price. He's with Brian Burnham. Brian, almost a week in hospital with a punctured lung and the broken ribs. Uh, where are you at right now? Give us a health, a health update. I'm feeling great. I mean, obviously, I've got a couple weeks to go, but um, my lung is healthy. Uh, my ribs are on their way to healing up, and uh, I'm feeling good. I'm up and around. I'm, I'm jogging. Um, so it just feels good to be back with my guys. Better seats for this game than the last time when you had the live tweet from the hospital bed. What was that like for you? It was it was tough. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting to be in the hospital that long, but you know, they wanted to be safe, and uh, unfortunately, I had to stay. So it was hard watching. Um, you know, a, a lot of emotions, and then just not being able to be there and support them. Um, I would love to be out there, but at least I'm I'm on the sideline. I'm able to support the guys. Um, so it feels good to be out of there. Thank you. I just want a huge shout out to the doctors and all, all the nurses that that took care of me, man. They're they're amazing people. Well said. Thanks for this. I appreciate it. No problem. You know, interesting story. Being in hospital for that long on a play that really didn't look yeah like something that could injure you as yes. severe as that was. Sometimes that happens, and look forward to getting Brian Burnham, maybe the best hands in the game in the last five to 10 years. I mean, the guy is Golden Glove Award winner. Canadian Football League over and over again. That's not an award, actually. But <laughs> if, if there was one, he'd be the guy. Back to Augustine after he picked up 11 on that last carry. And pretty hard work here to take the ball outside the Winnipeg 50. That's his third carry of the game. We'll put him up to about 20 yards. Yeah, clearly Buck Pierce is, is really going to be stubborn on the run tonight and get the offensive line driving off now there was some pretty vicious blocking up front from the offensive line against it looked like boom watch him well, those old linemen got a away with hands to the face but buck pierce is is committed to the run tonight at least so far especially with the lead bc 
allowing just 61 yards per game on the ground, mind you. And a couple of those, the opposition's been in passing situations because they've been down by so much. We'll go back to Augustine again, and that's a first down right up the middle. So Winnipeg checking off a lot of boxes here early in this football game. Yeah, you know, when you when you come in and you're playing against the defense that ranked third in the league with 10 sacks, you got off to a real good start with pressure on the quarterback in their first three games, the Lions defense, which turned into a tie for first place in interceptions with six, six in the back end. Pressure will cause the interceptions. What do you do to counter that great pass rush? Attack them with the run game. and 10 on the BC 52. They're going to hand it off again. And a lot of room all the way up the far side of the field as they keep this ball moving. Greg McRae getting involved. Big Stanley Bryant's going to pull out of there too. He's the left tackle. And fly sweeps coming around. Here they come around the edge. Watch Big 66 get out in front. He wants to find somebody to hit. And forces T.J. Lee to take a cab around him to get involved in the tackle. Sometimes those big guys don't need to touch anybody. They just need to be out there. Forces you and, around and them, And then yeah. DBs have to take the long way to get around. McCray involved 22 yards on the pickup for McCray. Augustine's got four carries for 28. And Oliveira, two carries for 11. As the Blue Bombers doing some serious damage on the ground here. The combo with his arm being held, walking off the field in clear pain. Tough start to the year for Lacombo. First and 10 for the Bombers on the BC 30. Augustine on the pitch from Polaris far side of the field. Augustine's got some room. He's going to take it down the sideline, and then eventually TJ Lee will finish him off. <laughs> 19 yards for Augustine puts him at 47 on just five carries. He's got a little jump in his step tonight. The big boys are getting it done. We haven't talked about Boom Guachum or Tim Bonner guys on that defensive line that got off to such a great start for BC. Polaris now working from the line 11. Completion. Ellingson hauls it in down inside the five. He was wrapped up there by Marcus Sales. And that'll take the Bombers a little bit closer. Johnny Augustine with success. What happens? Linebackers get up tighter. Safeties get up tighter. They want to help in the run game, so they get up tight. Little fake, boom, right over the top. A little curl. Augustine again, right up the middle. And he will be stopped short by the Lions defense. Well, different script now that the BC Lions are going to have to try and manage. I mean, if the Bombers finish this and get up 21 0. The Lions have always gotten in the first three games out to good starts. I mean, good offensive drives to start putting six or seven on the board right out of the gate, get the lead, and then have the other teams have to press to try and catch up. Tonight, the script is switched. Let's see what they got. Drew Brown into the game to try to finish off this drive for the Bombers. He'll keep it. He will push ahead. And is he Yes, delayed signal, but Drew Brown finishes it off, and the defending Great Cup champions delivering a statement here against the 3-0 Lions. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are, and the statement is, if you want to be the big dog on the porch, you got to come through us to get there. All the talk about the great start for the Lions, and this game is far from over. We've got three quarters to go, but... Lions have a hole to climb out of here. A lot of talk about their great start. And this team is much improved from a year ago with a hot quarterback out of the gate. Now he's got a lot of work to do. The previous. Drew Brown 
has a role on this club, obviously, steps in and takes care of business. Leggio out now to make it a 21-point lead at the end of the first quarter. And I know Bombers fans might disagree, but I don't think anybody saw this start coming. As Winnipeg looking good early. Polaris, Grant, Ellingson, Jeff Coach, Drew Brown showing everybody involved for the Bombers here early. Well, this much-anticipated battle of the unbeatens has been lopsided to start the Winnipeg Blue Bombers dominating pretty much every aspect of this football game. Nathan Rourke only had nine plays in the first quarter because of the ball possession, the run game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, probably their best first quarter running the football all season long. Zach Kolaris looks great and in great control in the huddle. And this defense making plays, Jackson Jeffco with the interception. So, you know, I think people would probably be a little bit surprised, not, not because they're ahead, because they are defending champs and they're the king of the hill, but because of the way they've won to get here. I mean, a missed extra point against Toronto, close games to start in Ottawa, back to back with, you know, wins with 19 points to get out to 21 nothing lead. I think that's what surprised me. Second quarter is underway. It's Shy Ross. Ross gets it back to the 35 before he is wrapped up and taken down. And Rourke will try to get this offense on track. Four of seven for 36 yards in the first quarter for Rourke. Now, Rourke struggled against Ottawa with a couple of interceptions. He also had a fumble and then got it together, regrouped, didn't let it phase him. Completed 91% of his passes, a 149 quarterback rating and 208 yards to win that game. Does he have that same bounce back here? Not that it's been his fault. He's only had nine plays. Facing more adversity now. There's a flag on the field. He's got a completion as he goes to Pearson. And we'll pick up this call. Offside, BC number 19. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, that's not going to help things. Dominique Grimes jumping the gun. Grimes with a couple of catches in this game. Nice start this year for Rick Campbell. Five and nine in his career coaching against Winnipeg. Rourke, first and 15, has a completion down inside the 45, out to almost the 50, a flag in the backfield. And this looks like it might be coming back as well. And Javon Katoy looked like he was the guilty party, at least by his body language. In a game that has started like this, the last thing you want to do is back Major yourself foul, up face penalties. penalties. BC number 59, 15-yard penalty. Now Kent still first off the edge. Katoy ended up getting out of the backfield. I was wondering if he chipped somebody, but it was on Kent Perkins. Toy made the catch and looked like they were going to get out of that first and 15, but now first and more than 15. First and a whole bunch here for Rourke. 30 to be exact. All the way back to his own 17. Has some time. Drops it off underneath the Butler. Made one man miss the second one, and then eventually Bombers three and four are there to wrap him up. Dietrich Nichols leading the way after a nine yard pickup. Take a look at the Lions and their slow start here in this game and you look at their rankings coming into tonight 45.7 points per game and only 500 yards of offense every game first in the league in all those key categories This is the championship defense Rourke looking down the field And he's got a completion outside the 50 What a catch Dominique Grimes it really was for him to have that body control and at the 
very last second, he turns to get in position to make the catch. Nathan Rourke's just going to put it up with a lot of air under it to let his receiver try and win a jump ball outside. But it was just that balance and the backpedal. Switch the hips around, backpedal three or four more steps. And then a 37 yard catch by Dominic Rhymes. But now it sounds, it looks like there's going to be a challenge from Michael O'Shea. Winnipeg is challenging the previous play for offense and pass interference. The play will be reviewed. So was there a push off from Rhymes to open himself up? We'll find out when we return. Third, third challenge of the year from O'Shea. Well, you know, there was some hand fighting early. Uh, there was clearly Dominic Rhymes put his hands on the back of Rose, but I think Rose was in good position to make a play and missed it. After review by the command center, the ruling on the field stands. Winnipeg, by losing his challenge, has lost a timeout. First down. Big play from Rhyme stands, and the BC Lions are in business here. They work on the Winnipeg 48. Works at 81 yards, passing. Takes the hand off to Butler, turns. Now drops it back off to his running back. And Butler, great jump cut, makes a couple of bodies miss. And a nice chunk on first down for Butler. The dual threat out of the backfield for BC. Yeah, four TDs in the first game of the season against Edmonton. The offensive player of the week. Two rushing, two receiving. Very good out of the backfield. Has 15 catches. That'll be add to his total right here. And then some pretty nice moves in the open field. Lions are four of five on second down so far in this game. Second and three is what they face here. Three receivers to the right for Rourke. Looks that way. Has a little bit of time. Nowhere to go. And they'll take him down. Willie Jefferson eventually tracks down Rourke. For Jefferson, his second sack of the season. He's in that stand-up position often because it, it takes away a passing lane as he gets up the field. Joel Figueroa, we said we'd watch this matchup. He gets some help from David Mackey, the fullback, but, you know, I, I'm going to give an assist here to the coverage of the Winnipeg Blue Bomber secondary because Nathan Rourke had time initially, but he wasn't comfortable with what he saw down the field. Lions set to kick this away, looking for that field position, flings off. High kick, end over end. Grant slides underneath it at his own 15. Grant right up the middle. Stays on his feet momentarily, and then he'll be tracked down just outside his own 25. Zach Kolaris, 5 of 5 for 71 yards and a touchdown. So far, he's got a 21-point lead, and he'll have the ball next. CFL on TSN kicks off week six action with a West versus East division matchup between the Elks and Alouettes. Tune in for Thursday Night Football presented by 7-Eleven at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, and exclusive TSN coverage all weekend long. And don't forget, we'll be out on the East Coast. Touchdown Atlantic. Rough Riders versus the Argos. Looks like you guys are going to have a good time. Oh, man, I can't wait to go out and visit out in the East Coast. He'll get it to McRae, and he's held on to by TJ Lee made sure he never had anywhere to go. Yeah, I told you that TJ Lee would bounce back. That's a big tackle. Looks like Laddick is in for Bola Cumble right now, the UBC. Take a look at how Bola Cumble got hurt. They got him on an ice pack. This was earlier in the, in the game. Combo grabs that elbow. Laddick, the 22nd overall pick in the 2021 draft. Blitz, Polaris near side. That pass thrown behind the intended target. Dalton Schoen, first in completion of the game for Kolaris. And first time Ryan Phillips decided to send the house and see if they could make the adjustment. And that's exactly why he's fired up, because he wanted to 
get some pressure and not just sit back. You sit back on a veteran quarterback like like Zach Kolaris, he's going to pick you apart. He'll just be like a surgeon just operating on open heart surgery to just get that defense. So they go after him and force the incompletion. Legio sets a punt. Gets it away from his own 15. 44 yard kick taken by Ross. Wrapped up immediately. Nowhere to go on the play. Nick Hallett down there with the tackle. So Nathan Rourke is trying to climb his way back into this. There's no 21 point play. So it's one play at a time. Lots of time. Obviously in this game. He's 7 of 10. So he's completing 7%. So Jordan Maximic, the offensive coordinator, stick with the game plan here. You know that and that includes James Butler. Making sure he's involved. Get the run game. Don't abandon that. Three scores. Really nothing in the Canadian Football League. That can come back from that in a heartbeat. Although this is the bomber defense. They start on their own 48. Near side Whitehead. And it falls incomplete. Nick Taylor in coverage against Lucky Whitehead. One thing that Jackson, Jeffcoat, and Jefferson will do to good quarterback, like talking about veteran quarterbacks, is just that intimidation factor. They get upfield with their hands up, and you've got to try and look around those hands, and it's very distracting to where they, the quarterback's eyes are going to come down away from the coverage and look right at the pass rush. Even if they don't get there, it still affect the accuracy of the throws. Second and 10 now. to look down the near side of the field and was Jefferson once again all six foot seven of them in the face of Rourke six foot seven and then that great reach and it was the reach that gets him home this time they'll move him around too so Nathan Rourke he's got to keep his eyes down the field but this time they don't have him on the end usually we see him on the end in that stand up this time they put him down in the three point stance in a defensive tackle he gets working on a guard hands up and just knocks that ball right out of the air. Bombers defense, as expected, has come to play. Grant's trying to track this one down. And that flies all the way out of bounds. And that kick out Pretty of bounds. Good field position for Winnipeg, yeah. Outside the 15. And you're right, good field position coming up for the Bombers. Offense and defense taking care of business for the visitors here on a Saturday in Vancouver. One week from tonight, touchdown Atlantic, Riders and Argos. Smile on your face every time this pops <laughs> up, doesn't it? Look at that setup. Yeah, looking forward to it. Down in Wolfville. About an hour out of Halifax. As I mentioned last night with Rana, they're gonna have a little lobster, a little East Coast lobster roll over there. Polaris has some time here. Finds Oliveira. He breaks one tackle, but he was held on to long enough that the rest of the Lions were able to get there after a gain of six yards. Josh Woods in the game now as well. On the spares on defense for BC to try and See on this second down is Ryan, Ryan Phillips gonna gonna send him UCLA product. The combo left the game earlier in the room now. That's the big uh, return is probably unlikely. Kalara second and four. Some pressure. They almost got to him, but he's got a completion to Ellingson. And it's down the field for a first down. Or really working combination routes over on the on that short side. Ellingson and Dalton Schoen working together to try and just have have the the secondary for the Lions just hesitate a little bit. There's there's uh, Ellingson and Schoen's a second arrow. And watch how they sort of slide together. And then combination routes here. They'll lean to the outside and then bring it back over the middle. That time for Ellingson, he's got 68 in the game. Go hand 
it off Oliveira right up the middle. Look at the push from the rest of the line. And that will give them almost enough for a first down. I'll tell you what, Patty Newfeld, this group up front, they just they just take off here and, and set it up. Demarcus Hardrick, step up, get the corner. When those, when those offensive linemen can get off the ball and then turn sideways, they basically block any pursuit angles by the linebackers. Gives Augustine a, a nice hole up the middle. Best game so far this season by the old line in the run game. Uh, they're almost at 100 yards already and just over six minutes remaining in the second quarter. Brown follows the big boys to the land of a first down. Gets that ball up to the 40. Lions defense been able to get that ball back one time so far. Outside of that, Bombers have been marching right now. Well, it's, it's first down success. I mean, that's really what it is. It's a run game that they're really struggling trying to stop. That'll be the halftime adjustments made by the the BC Lion defense. Ryan Phillips and Rick Campbell will get in there and say, hey, we, we got to take gap control. Sometimes you can blitz to stop the run. Whatever it takes, because that success on first down is the reason. Polaris looking downfield, flag as he lets it go, and it does fall incomplete. And that looks like it'll be against the Bombers. Legal block hands to the face, Winnipeg number 51. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. I mentioned that early on. I think it was uh, I think it was Jamarcus Hardrick early on that got away with one where his hands got up and high and that time clearly up in the chin. It was David Menard he got that time. Hardrick starting his career 2014 here with the BC Lions. Played 12 games that season. One more stop along the way until he settled in with the Bombers. On the BC 50, Kolaris turns, and the oh. ball pops out. Augustine tries to get it back. Looks like he does, but they will sort this thing out at midfield. <laughs> this is one where it's so difficult for the officials. I mean, they're fighting with well beyond when the play is stopped. The players, two players in this case, will always continue to fight to get it back. And try and get enough evidence. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get enough evidence, like enough arm coverage of the football to persuade the refs to go their way. And let's see the, the exchange here and see what happened on this one. It's just sort of a, a draw play where Zach Kolaros spun around. Like Augustine really had the handle from the beginning. Tim Bonner blew that up. Bonner got through there quickly and caused an issue for sure. Second and 23 now. Find shown takes it down inside the 40 and will get them back into field goal range yeah. with a 21 point lead. Yeah, such a smart play. That's such a smart play by Zach Kolaros. That's that's just winning football. Don't force it. You're, you know, you've, you've got a long way to go to get a new set of downs, but an intermediate type throw gets you in field goal range and able to add to the score if you make it. So I, you know, just a heads up smart play by a veteran quarterback. Legio will come out. He is 10 of 10 on the season. The guy on the other side, Sean White, also perfect on the year. This will be just beyond his longest kick of the year. Right on it, 45 yards. And the right hash. And that will hit him as enough. And Winnipeg's lead goes to 24 with 346 on the clock. Tough start for Rourke. Here's what he had to say about facing this Bombers defense. They just do so many things and they and they let their players, you know, um, be stars and, and let them kind of feel out the game. And, uh, you know, Big Hill is a great example of that. They kind of let them have some freedom to kind of just play off of instinct. And that's hard to prepare for. 
Um, and so we're just going to have to do a good job of, of, of taking what they give us and, and uh, making sure that their, the uncertainty that they try to create doesn't throw, off, throw us off our rhythm. Still time to get something accomplished oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Three and a half minutes. And I would say they're off the rhythm. They'll give it to Butler. The rhythm that we've seen. That's an interesting comment, though, from Nathan Rourke because he's talking about Adam Big Hill and, and how Richie Hall has designed the defense and really empowered his veteran players like Jeff Coat, Big Hill, and, and Jefferson to have, have a little freedom. You know, they, they know their assignment. And they know Adam Big Hill knows where he needs to be in the defense, but he can get there any way he wants. And that creates uncertainty when you're playing instinctively, as, as Nathan Rourke just mentioned. Second and six for Rourke. Looks to his right, now over to his left. Has some time. Can't find anybody. Now he's going to look for a deep shot down the field. Pearson's got it. And he'll take it off. What a play. What a throw. What a catch. Josh Pearson. Well, the home crowd needed that, and it's a good crowd. It was jam-packed outside of BC Play Stadium for this heavyweight tilt, and Roar gets lots and lots of time, and that's the key. He waits, and there you what you're wondering about Nathan Rourke's arm strength. That was right down the pipe for 66 yarder on the money. Pearson having an opportunity to slide in here and play with Burnham out. They moved Hatcher into the slot, and Pearson gets in behind Rose. Sean White out. Extra point is good. He's 18 for 18 on the year. Adding on as the BC Lions, courtesy Rourke to Pearson, have some life at home. Kate Burness promised that Matt Dunnigan would barbecue. Instead, we've had to settle for delivery. The boxes are all over here. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they have also delivered what is easily their best first half yes. of the season. Yes. We'll break it all down for you when we come back for the final couple of minutes. Here's Dustin. Big play, Pearson. Just the second catch of his career. And it went for 66 and a touchdown. Now to be kicked off to Janarian Grant. What does Grant have in store for us here? Janarian to the 50. Grant's going to take it. There's a flag at the middle of the field as Grant goes back the other way. Janarian Grant all the way. Grant's going to take it down to the 10, to the 5, all the way home. There's a flag on the field. What's the call? This is coming back, I believe. Oh. During the return, holding, Winnipeg number zero. Ten-yard penalty. First down, Winnipeg. We saw the flag early in the return. Looks like Connor Birdshaw. Right at the point of attack, he, he was holding, but that wasn't the number that they called, the officials called. I mean, this is a monster penalty, not only for the game, but for the million dollars. For Pat Hill. Yeah. The 90-yarder that's wiped out. Let's get a look at exactly what happened here. Well, they, they the official said zero, and he's right in the middle of your screen right here. So you can see that the, the outside, when the hands get to the outside of the shoulder pads and he's grabbing cloth and not allowing the cover man to get there, that was Kevin Francis. The good news wow. for Pat Hills, there's still another half, and Janarian Grant is dynamic. Polaris hands it off. That'll be a short pickup on first down. Let's go back to the touchdown for the BC Lions and Josh Pearson on this post route. Couple of things, wondering why the safety has stepped up in Malcolm Thompson to leave Winston Rose all by himself on this deep post. Although with Nathan Rourke that far away from the other side of the field in the post route, 
sure he just said, I don't think he can throw it that far. But Rourke got it done and dropped a dime to Pearson. Pearson on the sideline, by the way, went and said, this one's not over. Keep battling. That's what we needed. Polaris dumps it off underneath, and there's another flag as this one will be brought back out to the 50. And is this coming back as well? I think it might be as Wolitarski with a 28-yard pickup. Michael Shea. Pass interference. Winnipeg number 83. 10-yard penalty. Remains up second down. All we got, we got Dalton Schoen, the guilty party right here with TJ Lee. Goes inside and yeah, can't do that. Trying to trying to run what offenses call rub routes and defense is called picks. <laughs> picks are illegal. That's why defense calls them picks. Rub routes are legal. And that's the offensive terminology. But quite animated Michael O'Shea on the sideline and back-to-back -back penalties that took off big plays off the board. Second and 17 now for Winnipeg on their own 18. Polaris. just out to the 20 and no further boy they had some good pressure there on Kolaris and he eventually was able to get something out of what looked like would be nothing a couple of mistakes by the bombers a couple of penalties they could have got that momentum right back but as it stands Nathan Rourke will have a little bit of time here maybe look for at least field goal range after this punt Oh, Zach Kolaris, I think he's the best quarterback in the game in the last couple of years, extending plays. I mean, I, I don't know of a guy that can use his feet to just extend plays and negotiate the puck. It's not a guy like who's going to take off all no, the time, exactly. but he sure moves well in there with that footwork. Legio, low kick, Ross takes it at his 45. Shy Ross back up for midfield a pretty decent field position here for the BC Lions with 69 seconds on the clock yeah absolutely absolutely and they've got you know they got some good protection up front that's got to give Nathan Rourke a little more confidence that he had all that time to throw that deep wide side post to Josh Pearson Rourke 8 of 13 for 154 Big time touchdown late here in the half. Had an interception on his first drive of the ball game. Starts on the Winnipeg 53. Man wide open, far side of the field. That's going to go for a first down. And Rhymes continues to have a day. That's his fourth catch. It'll take him out over 65 yards. Yeah, veteran receiver. Smart, get as much as you can and then get out of bounds. Stop the clock. Six seconds, all that went off the clock on that play. Grimes finding some space for himself, making the most of it. Whitehead held the coverage. On the 36. Josh Pearson's touchdown. He was on the bench walking and talking to anybody that would listen, saying, This is not over. This is what we needed. That spark, the touchdown, another deep ball work with the pump fake. And Dominic Rhymes at the top end just cutting underneath Mick Taylor to win that fight at the end, at the top of the row. We knew this offense was explosive, but they had been contained for the majority of the opening half but finally Rourke with a couple of deep shots as is sitting with a 10-point game here in BC well let's take a nice look at Dominic Rhymes at the office 
Here he goes. Now straight down the field. Nothing fancy about the route. He's just running that straight seam route, timing it up to, as Maverick says, throw on the brakes and let the other guy fly right by. <laughs> you had to sneak one in, didn't you? <laughs> Their two touchdown drives tonight were two plays for 70 yards, two plays for 53. Those two deep balls, though, one to Josh Pearson and that to Rhymes. See how Nathan Warren puts so much air on the ball and drops it over into the bucket to those guys rather than try and throw it on a line. That gives them the chance to manipulate the top end of the road and find a way to get position. Back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, and the Lions are right back in this going into halftime. Now, can they contain that guy? <laughs> Not likely. I mean, with what he's done so far tonight. Yeah, I mean, you're almost at the point of squib kicking if you're BC and keeping it out of his hands. 24-14. 100-yard game for Rhymes, his second of the season. And they are going to kick yep, it low. They are. And stay away from Janarian Grant. And the field position will be pretty good for the Bombers. But no threat of that one coming all the way back the other way. Let's see Dominic Grimes at the top of the road again because he he is going to time it up, time it up. Now, Nick Taylor is trying to look at his eyes and time his turn. And they're always just a step behind of the receiver. As long as you play it cool when you're down at the top there, just take a look, peek at it, don't give away that you're going for the ball, and then cut underneath. Veteran. Takes care of that. Now, Zach Polaris has 51 seconds to get at least in the field goal range to get three more. It's been a great first half, especially if you're on the over tonight. These two teams blowing it up offensively. Polaris hands it off, and that'll be pushed ahead on first down for a short pickup. So if you're if you're BC, you're you're in there at halftime talking about okay, we've got our offense on track, now defense we've got to stop the run. If you're Winnipeg, you're Mike Beloche, you're going back in there at halftime and saying, guys, we're fine. We've got the lead, great start, got the special teams going. Offensively, we made some plays. Let's just eliminate those one or two mistakes. The holding on a return that took seven off the board to start with. Second and eight for Polaris. 30 seconds to work. Four receivers, wide side right. That's where he's going to look down the field for Schoen, and he's got it at the 30. Takes it inside, down towards the 25 as the Bombers bounce back with a big one. Well, they're just playing a little four, four men to the wide receiver, quad set to the wide side, and then who comes out of the bunch deep? That's what the Lions have to determine, and they've gone on Luchas Purifoy a couple times. And Ryan Phillips going, now, now you've given Zach Kolaros a chance for a major shot to the end zone here. You take a shot, you're in field goal range already. 22 seconds to work for Kolaros. Is he gonna take a shot deep? No, he'll come underneath to show it, and show it has a first down and takes it down to the 15 with 15 on the clock. Yeah, you even better chance here to take one shot to the end zone. Got to be efficient. Can't scramble around too much, but they're going to try and get this one called quickly and not lose precious time. Polaris. Underneath, back down, and that will fall incomplete. He was looking for Rashid Bailey. Would have been his first catch of the game. Polaris wants a flag. And he's going to argue for one, but he's not going to get it. Well, now you're now you're in in that bubble area. I mean, if Michael O'Shea wants to give it one more shot, go quick. You know, you you throw maybe a fade row quickly right at the cone. If it's incomplete, it's out of bounds and no damage done. And if your receiver can get in behind, you get the major. But you got to be efficient. If he scrambles around here, he could lose a chance for three. Polaris with time ticking down in the opening half. That one will fall incomplete. Off the hands of Wolitarski. And with four seconds left, Legio will come out to look to tack on three more. Yeah, Zach Kolaris knew exactly the situation. That's why he took that quick look, one step, hit that, drill it over the middle. If it's not caught, no damage done. But we got to do it fast and efficiently. He wasn't going to waste time and, and lose an opportunity for at least three. Interesting first half for the Bombers. 
Jump out to a 24-0 lead. Then give up 14 points late. And now a chance for Legio to end the half on a high note. And he will punch that one through. And Winnipeg takes a 27-14 lead. What a remarkable first half here. Yeah, this is the heavyweight bout we were expecting. The visitors are on top. BC hanging around, though. Let's send it to Farhan and the panel. Wow, guys, poor Pat Hill. We were cheering for you, Pat. <laughs> we really were. Look, I'm from New Westminster as well. I'd like to share some of the groceries, and I probably would have liked to have shared the million head. I got to yeah. do it. I got to do it. Somebody needs a pat on the back. <laughs> that's low. Wow. That's bad. That's, that's bad. But I had to hey, do it. listen, uh, not good at all, but certainly the Lions, uh, a <laughs> good <laughs> comeback. 14 points at the end there to get back yep. into this game. Yep. Wow. And, you know, coming into this game, Marcus Sales had some interesting things to say about his former team, and he talked about the Bombers receiving core and their offense being vanilla. Uh, they showed they were a little more than that, didn't they, Milt? Yeah, he said they were vanilla, but I think that vanilla had a little... Uh, cherries on it, some nuts, some sugar, and some extra whipped cream. But yep. these BC Lions, we've also seen some great things out of them. And originally, I was going to talk about that bomber offense. We saw they had a great balance with their running game and their passing game. But these BC Lions found a way to get back in this game. We were saying after that first quarter and going a little bit to that second quarter, they were down 24 to nothing. This game is over. Well, Nathan Rourke has found a way to bring his team, get that momentum back, and give him an opportunity to win in his second half. It's not easy, but I like what he's doing. He's proven a lot of people wrong remember the beginning of the year i was like well i need to see a little bit more i've seen enough this guy is for real yeah. can they have an opportunity to win this game yes they do now originally i said no but they have an i almost lost my breath yeah. too, but i got it back Breathe milk. i got it back, I got it, back. <laughs> it was an exciting end of the half it was a lot exciting. of points uh, it, it was uh, i was getting ready we had to flip, 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 switch it up here i was getting ready to talk about the bombers defense and offense and, and i made a note and i made a note earlier and i said this score this one was 21 nothing i said if you're looking at this score and you think this is an indicator of the difference between these two teams you're naive and you don't know football and mm -hmm. i said that with a 21 nothing in my notes here and now we've kind of we're kind of seeing it it's balanced everything out. happened right for the bombers early mm -hmm. everything happened wrong for the lions and i'm still impressed watching that and it was 21 buzz, and I watched Nathan Rowe go back out there, and he was still poised. He was yep. still making yep. the right reasons. Just yep. a heck of a, heck of a defensive scheme uh, by Richie Hall on that turnover. Yeah, right. And thanks for the lead-in. You know, our producer Jamie Riddell has taken a couple of days off and having a few cold ones. He wrote in and says, "Hey, just when you think you got Winnipeg figured out, they punch you in the mouth." And here's how they do it. Richie Hall, defense coordinator, says, "You know what? I'm going to bring pressure from the boundary, and we're going to give uh, Jackson Jeffco a little rush, engage." And drop back. Look, you've got three underneath throws here. Nathan Rourke is just now climbing the pocket. Let's look at it from a different perspective. You're going to see pressure off the edge and Willie Jefferson coming from the weak side. That The linebacker goes strong side, so Rourke is taught to work back left. He's late. He got a wall built up right there with Jefferson and pressure off the edge. He looks out there, can't see it, comes back to his check down, and Jefferson, and Jefferson goes, thank you. Or, uh, Jeff goes, goes, thank you. To me, that that is preparation. That is looking at the tendencies and progressions and giving it to him and taking it away. Jackson Jeffco gets his second career pick. Last one is 2017. That is Richie Hall having his boys ready right there. Yep. Yeah, and certainly the Lions are making this a little bit more entertaining because of uh, what they did late in that quarter. 40 points in the first half. We talk about scoring being up. It's been a lot of fun. The Lions will open the ball with the ball in the second half. That was a retaliation hit. It was a gutless hit. Anybody that cheers for that dude, supports that dude, cheers when he runs up the field, flexing and all that stuff, I hope you find a way to sleep tonight. Marino walking off and showboating as Mazzoli lay there on the field injured. He has two beautiful children to support. And you go through his shins and then get up flexing and calling him stuff that nobody should be calling anybody? Come on. That's beyond any code on earth. 
Just an ugly incident last night in Regina and the latest on the situation involving Garrett Marino and the CFL. They are beginning an investigation process which will include a hearing. Uh, the league certainly strongly considering a suspension. Obviously the Players Association is involved. Decision not expected immediately could go right up until Monday but the league certainly is concerned about the players history. Uh, the celebration after the injury all of it and what we've seen. Milt we'll start with you. You saw how emotional Nate Bahar was with yep. the whole situation. What's your takeaway? Well first of all I want to hope I pray that Jeremiah Mazzoli gets back sooner than later. You know, uh, that was very hard to watch. And speaking on this young man, as I mentioned last night, and I'll double down, I don't know this man, you know, I don't know his character personally, but what I've seen, what I've heard people say, what I've heard uh, a reporter from Alabama, Birmingham, where he went to school say, they say, this is who he is. These are the things he's done his entire career. So no one who knows him was really surprised. It was disgusting. It was even disgust more disgusting as he walked off the field and celebrated. Man. How do you celebrate something like that? As he as, lays as, on as the field. As a teammate. Do his teammates know the way he is? Did they watch him celebrate? And the intent on that, he was intending to hurt Jeremiah Mazzoli. So if that was what he's intended, which I think he mission accomplished, but something has to be done. The CFL, the CFLPA needs to step in and make sure something is done. Not a slap on the wrist, not one game, not two games. More than two games, in my opinion. They need to hit him hard. It's often said that it's, it's tough to judge intent in, in football. Not right there. And, and, I, and I get that. <laughs> Not right but there. But when you've seen the history of this guy, like you just said, and what we saw last night, and his response, I'm really confident in saying it was a clear attempt to injure in this situation. And then he cheered as his brother in football laid there on the turf what looked like a potential to be very serious injury. Now, fast forward. 24 hours later, have we heard our apology? Anything from Garrett Moreno. We've heard nothing. He injured one of our star players. And now Jeremiah Masoli is out. Uh, CFL, the commissioner, CFL office. It's your turn. You're, you're up. Yep. Um, all of the above, guys. You know, couldn't, couldn't agree more. Uh, this is uh, tough to watch. We should be uh, applauding and cheering for all the positive things going around in the CFL. And, and we're talking about this. And uh, there's no room for it in our game. And uh, the CFL needs to take action. And as to your point, Milt, the CFLPA needs to be on board with it, too. It's not, I, I understand that their position is to protect the players. But we're talking about uh, uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli. He's a player, too, right? <laughs> it's like his, his career could be over with. He's an 11-year mm. player now. Mm. And, uh, and he's coming off a knee injury. And, and to me, there's no room for this. Draw the line. Suit said it last night. I love it. Draw the line and let's move forward so we don't see it in the game anymore. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, the longest suspension we've seen for an on-field incident, two games. Simone Loris, Kyrie Saber, Khalif Mitchell, they've all dealt with those. Let's see where the league goes here. Janarian Grant going all the way to the end zone. He was busy in the first half. When we come back, Jackson Jeffcoat is standing by with Blake Price. Well, Milt, the Lions did close the gap with a couple of long Nathan Rourke TD passes. Take two stats. Yeah, you, you have to love it. You're looking at maybe the two best quarterbacks in the CFL. Zach has uh, 152. Nathan has 200, 207. But the big thing to me is Janarian Grant. And from our stats guru, John Pearlberg, he's played in 22 games, and he has five kick return touchdowns. Impressive. Impressive indeed. Here's uh, Blake Price with another one of the impressive bombers from that first half, Jackson Jeffcoat. Second career interception for you, Jackson. Do you prefer that to a sack now? What do you think? No, nah, I love my sacks. It was great, though. It's always good to get the ball back to the offense. Timing of that one, too, uh, to make sure that the BC Lions didn't get their offensive footing early. Was that important? Very important. Very important. This is a, They have a good offense, and so we got to continue to shut them down. You see, we, we let them get too many points already, so we got to come back and play Bombers defense. Did you learn some lessons there late in the half? For sure, for sure. And we're going to make sure that we don't let anything else slide. Thanks for this. No problem. Thanks, guys. One player who slid, Dominic Rhymes, slid behind coverage to get the Lions back into this game when we come back the second half from Vancouver. A beautiful evening in Vancouver. The Lions trail, but it was Josh Pearson's first career touchdown that got them going, and he's with our Blake Price. Josh, first career CFL touchdown, and uh, that one is just like you drew it up, I'm sure. Uh, talk about what happened. 
Uh, it felt good getting the first one. Uh, just standing on our P's and Q's. Coach drawing it up. Just trust the offense, trust the quarterback. Hey, good results gonna happen. That was an important one, it seemed, to stem the bleeding. Do you expect bigger things in the second half? Oh, yeah. Uh, football played in four quarters, not one, two, or three. Four quarters, they had us down on the ground, but they didn't take us all the way out. We're going to have a better half this half. We're going to come out with this W. No stranger to points this offense. Oh, no. We're not scared of no points. We're going to put points on the board. Deep is going to take care of us. We're going to take care of us on offense. We're going to be good. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. He makes a great point. I mean, the offense can score. Defense is going to have to make some plays here in the second half as well. Yeah, and I think it starts for the Lions to stop the run on first down and, and put Zach Kolaris in some more, in some tougher situations on second down, second and long, second and ten or more. Deficit is 13 for the Lions here at home, but they will get the ball to start the second half. Shy Ross waits for it back at his own 15. We've already had one kick return touchdown in this game. Another one would mean a million dollars for Pat Hill. Ross takes it at the 15, now to the 20. Up to the 30 for Shy Ross, and there's another flag on the play as Ross takes it out to midfield and beyond. But a flag on this return is going to bring it back. Well, new plan. Both teams have to be told at halftime if there's already During one return, kick return. Holding. BC number 46. Ten-yard penalty. First down. No penalties allowed for the second one. We've had two tonight. One called back, and that one was very close, but would have come back because of the penalty. Brings one all the way back down to the BC 20 after a nice return from Ross is called back. So Rourke gets the ball, 10 of 15 for 207 yards, two touchdowns, and an early interception in this game. He has clawed his team back into this thing, and now they will look for more against his Bombers defense. They'll hand it off to Butler, and really nothing going on the ground in the first half. For BC. Yeah, it's tough to run against this bomber defense. They rank third coming in after four games, giving up less than 75 yards a game along the ground. So tough to establish it, but the BC Lions have to keep with it. Second and nine. Rourke. Bombers are going to bring five men. Rourke has it batted down. It comes right back to him, and now he's going to take off, but he's wrapped up immediately. And nowhere to go as that five-man pressure from the Bombers gets the job done. Yeah, who got the big paws up? I think probably it's it's either got to be Willie Jefferson or Jackson Jeffcoat. I would guess that it's and inside is Willie Jeff Jefferson, and it was Jefferson. Talked about his presence earlier in this game and a couple of knockdowns coming into this game. And now the punt. Grant takes it at his own 39. Nowhere to go this time. Nice tackle downfield by Kevin Francis. And you can imagine there was some discussions on cover teams for BC with Janarian Grant. What a first half for him. In fact, that final kickoff from the Lions after the second score, they kicked it away from Janarian Grant. They just squibbed it. Gave, gave up Zach the field position. Yeah, yeah. gave Zach Kolaris a, th a three points before the end of the half. Kolaris, 152 and a touchdown. Running game going for sure, 99 yards on the ground in the first half for Winnipeg, averaging 78 on the season. Completion close to a first down for Ellingson. Zach Kolaris. The linebackers are hugging the line for BC. This is this is the discussion they would have had. Like, get closer to the line of scrimmage. Purefoy on the outside, that third linebacker, he does the same thing. So what does Zach Kolaris and Buck Pierce do? We're going to throw it right behind the linebacker. Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. Eh? Absolutely. The chess game goes on. So now, Ryan Phillips, what's your move? Second and just inches. Brown into the game, over to his right, and he's got a first down, takes this ball inside the BC 50. 
The other thing you do if you're if you're Buck Pierce, you got to be thinking if they're going to hug the line with their linebackers, then that'll put the secondary into man to man situations. Because if your linebackers are close to the line of scrimmage, they can't drop in zone in those underneath zones. So they're going to come up early to stop the run. And Zach Kolaris has got one on ones with some pretty talented receivers and targets to go to. Ellingson leads the way with five catches for 78 yards. In the slot to his quarterback's left is where he sits right now. We'll hand it off to Augustine, and Bonner wraps him up, takes him down after a short pickup, and that'll set up second and a little bit longer. Yeah, big down here, but this is this is a nice play by Bonner to, to come down the line of scrimmage and just recognize it quickly, close that gap down. Good start to the season for the second year player at a Florida Atlantic. Led the team last year in his first year with five sacks. Had a couple of sacks last week, his first two of the season. Second and nine for Polaris. Augustine stands in to his right. Forced out of the pocket. Polaris on the run. He's going to try to do it himself. Down to the 40. It's going to be awfully close. Looks like he's just short. Needed the 39. Quick recognition from Zach Kolaris to, to see that he had the edge. Inside pass rush there. Nathan Cherry got caught, lost contain, and when he did, Kolaris quickly recognized it and bounced outside to get it on his own. Or get very close to it on his own. Third and just under a yard. Brown into the game again. Huge opportunity for the BC defense to do something big. Brown pushing ahead, and once again, he's got it. Takes it down inside the 39, and this Winnipeg drive will continue. Will continue, and in field goal range as we speak. So good opening drive for the Bombers to start the second half. And Grab some of that momentum back that they lost with the quick 14 points from Nathan Rourke to end the half. Well, one of the things that really helped them get off to a great start was they dominated time of possession in the first quarter and kept Rourke essentially off the field. And they put together a drive here. Sixth play of this one. First and 10 on the line 39. Lawrence up high to Latarski. Does drop incomplete. It'll be second and ten. It's the dig route. Walatarski had to get to that window. He inside release and pretty good job of, of taking away that inside release by Gary Peters. Making it tough and, and sort of a a little bit behind the pace of the play to get that, that inside throwing lane. This drive alive. Polaris under pressure. Hellenic trying to track him down. Now Polaris dumps it off. Al Oliveira just missed him. And that'll bring up third down for the Bombers. Well, I think the, you know, the, the Lions defense will be disappointed that they, I mean, they ended up getting the stop, but they got it 10 yards to too late because it's going to set up a field goal attempt and possible another three points on the board for the Bombers which is pretty much money with Legio perfect on the year yeah far cry from the start of the kicking game last year for the Bombers much talked about Legio on the 45 left hash money and he has enough Knocks it home again and remains perfect on the year. Rourke to get the ball with his team down 16. Long way to go in this battle of unbeatens at BC Place.
Welcome back to BC Place. I called this the heavyweight battle to start the game, and the challenger was on the mat early. A interception on the opening drive for Nathan Rourke. The pressure was getting to him a little bit. Jeff and Jeff Cote and Willie Jefferson in his face, and then he got things going with Dominic Rimes making a big catch. Got that Josh Pearson touchdown to get on the board, and then one more just before the half. So the challenger trying to take on the champs. Getting up off the mat, he's still a little groggy. Trying to hang around in this fight. That one a little too high for Whitehead, who we saw in the group of highlights there. Missed him over in that area earlier as well. Whitehead has just one catch for eight yards in this game. Yeah, I was gonna mention that coming out of the half that, that Lucky Whitehead has not been involved really in this, in this offense. And, and one way to do that is just to throw him a couple bubble screens, things like that, get the ball in his hands and we well, could get, always take one, right? Exactly. Yeah. You could take it to the house from almost anywhere. Rhymes leading the way. 105 yards and a touchdown. Pearson just the one catch. 66 yard major. Three receivers to the left here for Rourke. Jefferson bringing pressure right up the middle. Rourke stays on his feet now. Scrambles out to the right. Running for his life. Throws it. And it will fall incomplete. <laughs> Willie Jefferson's going to go over and say something to him. Looked like he had him. Well, we say that a lot with Willie Jefferson. I mean, this guy is just outstanding defensive player. Look at that inside move on Joel Figueroa. I mean, just slap the hands away and inside right in the face of Nathan Rourke. Of course, the back end, Adam Big Hill had dropped deep, so that would have caused Rourke to hold on to the ball a little longer, too. Fourth two and out of the game for the Lions. They had just six coming into the game all season. Grant on the return takes it back out to the 30. Jefferson shaking his head. He doesn't oh, believe he got away. Close. Yeah. How did he, he get away? So close. Looking for his second sack of the game. This time, Rourke, very slippery, gets away. Good atmosphere here at BC Place tonight. Good tunes, crowd's loving it, good crowd on a late Saturday afternoon start. Polaris on his own 31, some pressure. This time he gets it away down the field, and that is caught by Greg McCray. Wow, that's... Listed as a running back, they've been using him in the slot, and this time he goes deep. Yeah, that's that's a great catch for, uh, you know, a running back. Led. Clearly, he's got more of that. He can play slot back. You could play him at wide receiver. Great athlete. Runs that inside post, and, and TJ Lee can't cover it any better. That ball was thrown right where it had to be, so McCray could block out TJ Lee. Polaris closing in on 200 yards. 14-19 for 192. Handed off to Oliveira, who cuts it back to the right. It's about half of what they need on that first down carry. Well, I'll tell you what, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers just, you know, I look at their games, all wins, with the lead here in BC on the road. It's a different journey every single week, but a championship team knows how to win. And we say that all the time. What does that really mean? Well, there's a lot to it, but this team knows when it's, they've got to show some, a sense of urgency, know when the play is important. Second and six here. Polaris gets away. Stays on his feet as he falls. He's got a come on. on the far side. Come on. Line. What a play by wow. falling. Kolaris gets it to Dalton Schoen for a first down. And the big dog on the porch kind of saying, hey, Dalton, you can talk all you want about other quarterbacks, but the best guy in the league is still right here. You know, and I'm sure Bully by Mitchell's watching too, saying, hey, get me in that conversation. <laughs> but you know what? That's amazing play by Zach Kolaris. And that's a first down, new set of downs, and into field goal range. Again, knowing when it matters most and making it happen, that's what this team does. 200 yards on the nose in style now for Kolaris. Augustine will take the handoff. Lee wraps him up. Williams there as well. You know, and, and we've seen quarterbacks get in trouble like this and then just throw it wildly to an area and usually it gets them in trouble. But Zach Kolaris not only had the balance 
but he also understood that, you know what, I, I know where my guy is. And so on the way down, flips it out to Schoen and, and moves the chain. Just an incredible play. Nathan Rourke going, okay, I see you, champ. Second and six. Pressure coming. Polaris to his right again. And he's got a completion again. Taken down inside the 10 as he finds Schoen, who's stepping up big here in the second half. Leads and this team in receiving yards. You, you just get the sense that they're going to work, right? That they're at they're at they're at the office. And, and watch Zach buy time and move to his right while throwing across his body to the left on that bang rope back inside the show. I mean, in complete control, putting the ball right where it has to be. 101 yards for Schoen. That's a new career high for the first year bomber. You know, and all these drives in this time of possession keeps Kid Canada on the bench. Very similar to that first quarter that we discussed. Rourke having to watch on, unable to get that momentum back that they had late in the first half because Winnipeg has done an excellent job on both sides of the ball tonight here in Vancouver. He's going to have his ups and downs. We saw him bounce back against Ottawa. There's still lots of time in this game. And now all Nathan Rourke can do is hope his defense limits this to a field goal attempt. But, I, you know, I, he's checked boxes in every start. And last week was coming back from adversity. Got it done. Might need a miracle tonight. Delvin Bro to the sideline. Hakeem Johnson slides in. Will work against Ellingson. One on one to the wide side left of Kolaris. Kolaris is going to look this way. And it's a completion inside the five as he goes back again to Greg McRae. Third catch of the game for McRae. Well, you we mentioned five or six plays in a game. The big ones. I would suggest this is one of them. Lions give up a major here. That's a pretty big mountain to climb. Second and goal from the BC4. Brady Oliveira next to his quarterback. Polaris is going to be throwing here. Or is he? Scrambles away from some pressure. He goes back to Dalton Schoen, and the Bombers once again blow it open. Schoen's second touchdown of the game. Wow. Spinning out of trouble, on the run, across the body. Schoen on the crossing route. He's going to keep working all the way across the field because he sees his quarterback in scramble mode. Look at the pre-snap motion, making it tough to determine which guy's got which guy in the secondary for BC. And then Schoen just gives him a target, but Zach rolling to his left, throws those shoulders around, and throws a dart to 83. I know Kolaris has essentially been near perfect since joining the Bombers, but there's been a lot of wow moments tonight. Absolutely. I mean, it just, and you expect it. He's been that good. The rating MOP, and he's putting on a show here in Vancouver. Dalton Schoen having himself a game as well. Two touchdowns and 105 yards. Take a look at this touchdown and see Zach Kolaros. An inside move by Boom Guachim, which means there's got to be secondary contained by the Lions. It somehow is lost. That looked like a stunt where Guachim was asked to go inside and didn't have a linebacker to contain Zach Kolaros getting outside, throwing while rolling to his left across the body and what an accurate throw for a touchdown. Finished off a seven play, 79 yard drive. Winnipeg three of four in the red zone tonight. They were just five of 12 coming in to the season. Here's Ross and Ross will take it outside the 42. No flags here, so that's where the BC Lions will start. They've got a lot of work to do as the Blue Bombers in full control. Lots of talk so 
so far this season about Nathan Rourke, but Zach Pilar is the reigning MLP. He's put on a show here today. Oh, he has. He's, he has just calmed all that down and said, just hold on, everybody, before you start handing out the 22 MOP. Let me just show you how it's done. I mean, he has been on the mark, moving out of the pocket. Look at this play. Unbelievable for a key first down that ended in another touchdown. This one right here, rolling opposite way to his left, back across the body, an accurate pass to Sean. Unbelievable for Zach Kolaros. Well, not unbelievable. Believable and expected. 18 of 23, 231, two touchdowns. Three big catches on that drive by Schoen as the 25-year-old has got the job done this evening. They'll hand it back off to Butler, and this has really not led to anything tonight. Butler has been very good coming in so far, averaging about five yards per carry in the season and just 14 yards tonight. Yeah, and I would say in the in the matchup between Joel Figueroa and Kent Berg, as I talked about early on, Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffcoat have been difference makers tonight. I know they often are, but the matchup we're gonna watch. Second and seven for Rourke. This one's up for grabs, batted down by Nichols. And there was some zip on that ball from Rourke. Off some hands, up into the air, and eventually down onto the turf. Take a look at the matchup here. Figueroa, nice job on that block. That was tipped by Katoy. Katoy does not have a catch so far here tonight. Untop. The kick will be taken cleanly by Grant. 47 yards, Grant. Puts his head down and lunges ahead for a short return. And Zach Kolaris has been moving this ball extremely well, basically since the moment he joined the Bombers. Yeah, I mean, 16 to 2, postseason record 5 and 0. Oh. Just nothing but winning from Zach Kolaris since joining Winnipeg. He's, he was that final piece to the puzzle. This was a good team. And then he, when he was dropped and started leading it, it became a great team and a championship team. He, he had some Mike Tyson in his prime like power in this heavyweight, heavyweight bout early on in the CFL season. Starts this drive on his own 25. He only had to punt twice tonight. Ellingson goes up and gets it. He'll be wrapped up by Sales after a short pickup. Sixth catch for Ellingson here tonight. I'm not sure where we're at in time of possession, but my guess is that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have owned it. You know, really, it, it feels like Zach's been on the field all game long. They haven't been getting it in big chunks, right? They've been working, they've been Just working their way down the field. First half was the run on first down, get him in a second manageable. This has been different in the second half, but same result. Long drives, time of possession. Steady diet of second and fours and second and fives, which they're in now. Tarski will get his hands on this one and it moves the sticks. Well, and, and you can't get pressure on those timing throws. You know, those are those are those are short throws. So you, you got you got a little curl, and when you get the curl, it's one, two throw. So you're not gonna get there for with pressure. Turn around curl right there. And when you're second and four, that gets you a new set. Second and ten, you're punting. Augustine stands in there to the right of Polaris right now. 49 yards on the ground. They're going to give it to him again. This time, Purifoy is there and tracks him down. And that'll set up a second and long. Johnny Augustine. Yeah, and this is, this is a key play for the BC Lions right now to, to have any hope to crawl back into this one. Ryan Phillips needs to go deep in that playbook. Right here, what what does what kind of magic act does number eight have for this second and long? Because well, they've seen... brought some pressure and he's just got away. Yeah, absolutely. I, I you know it. I had a flash. I'm not comparing the two different players, but he was he's been a little fluty like tonight, Zach Kolaris, with his escapability. Yes, the way he's been able to keep drives alive, keep plays alive. 
with pressure right up the middle. This time they'll get him. Quincy Moget with his first career sack. A free look at Zach, and he got him. And the BC Lions defense making a play at the end of the third quarter. It's their offense that'll have to get going next as the defending champs look like the champs here again. Four and O Bombers versus the three and O Lions and it is the Bombers on top. 37-14, look at that first down total. Right yeah, now. they could finish in this fourth quarter. They're really making a statement tonight. This red hot team, BC Lions out of the gate, they're just taking it, taking them to school. I mean, 22 first downs to seven. The time of possession, not up there, but it's about double. Over 30 minutes for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, just over 15 for the BC Lions. I mean, Zach Kolaris, best game, best running game for the offense tonight. Certainly can control things on the ground, and they've got 100 more rushing yards than the BC Lions so far tonight. So the Bombers offensively been hitting it in a few different ways. It all starts and you know, with this guy right here, though. I mean, yeah, they, they this is their best rushing game of the year. Defense making plays. The bookends getting it done. But it all starts with Zach. Leggio kicks this away from just outside his own 15. Ross takes it on the high shoulder. And now he's going to come up the near sideline with it. Shy Ross down to the 30. Forced out of bounds by the kicker. And a good return that'll give the Lions some juicy field position here to start the fourth quarter. Well, the key to this return for Shy Ross is to catch it in the air, first of all. Catch it in the air, and, and it looked like the cover team for Winnipeg thought it was a deeper kick than it actually was. Got him off guard. They brought him in because he's an athlete, and he showed it there. Great speed, excellent burst, and good field position. The Lions will start at the Winnipeg 31. No more room for error, trailing 37-14. Work's going to look for a big chunk right here to And the Lions answer back. Well, you know, on the sideline, they were saying, we got to take some shots. We got to get it. The clock is the enemy now, as well as the Bombers. And that's exactly what they do to start the fourth quarter. Throw it up to Dominic Rhymes, who's been great winning the jump ball tonight. Second touchdown of the game for Rhymes, fourth of the season. They are down 17. Yeah, a single would make it 16. That's a two possession game. I... And they're lining up to go for two. Because they're just looking at the, the overall number, 17. They're trying to get as many as they can each, each play. Keeps it, throws it, he's got a man and he's in. Katoy gets involved. His first catch of the game. And the lead has been cut to 15. Don't blink here tonight at BC Place. <laughs> Look at the hang time. <laughs> nice. Rhymes goes and gets it. Let's put the spotlight right there on a guy that's winning jump ball after jump ball. This is a stop and go route. He's just going to go down like he's going to run a curl pound those feet but it doesn't really influence Nick Taylor he's still high and in pretty good position in fact in great position inside that's a Brian Burnham like big play catch elevating selling out and coming down with it to keep his team alive in this game stretched out a bit six six catches for 136 yards and two touchdowns for Rhymes. So without Burnham, Hatcher had a big game. Now Rhymes is having a big game. And Burnham said, yeah, yeah, I taught him that. I taught him that stuff. They're going to squib it away from Grant, but it's a lot pretty good field position as it's brought all the way back up to the Winnipeg 50. Yeah, that's, you know, that's that's the threat of a great returner. That's having how a, afraid they are. Yeah, having a great returner on your team you start to kick away from him and give Zach Kolaris, who's playing outstanding, 
great field position because you're squibbing it forward. I mean, he doesn't even have to touch the ball anymore tonight, and he's influencing the game. What do you think of that strategy? Well, if you're, if you don't want to give up seven yeah. to number 80, although there's someone in Abbotsford that, what was his name again? <laughs> Pat Hill. Pat Hill out in Abbotsford going, kick it to him. Not a fan <laughs> of squib kicks tonight, I don't think. Oh. So Kolaris gets it again. He's got a 15 point lead, 13 and a half to play in the fourth quarter in this battle of unbeaten on a Saturday night. Augustine, right up the middle. Right to midfield is where he stops. But a nice pickup on the ground again for Winnipeg. Last time in this situation, Ryan Phillips went with safety blitz, and it worked. It was second a little bit longer than five. And that really is the difference here. The safety, if you're going to bring him up, and it's only five, a quick hot route from Buck Pierce and Zach Kolaros can, can get you a new set. But you know, I, I, I think the, the Lions have got to, at some point, Ryan Phillips start to just let the guys play man-to-man -man press. And if they give up a deep one, they do, but play aggressively. Four receivers to the right for Kolaros. That's where he's going to look. There's a flag as he throws this ball deep for Bailey. He stumbled backwards and couldn't make a play on it. But it's going to be against Winnipeg, and that'll back them up. Legal block hands to the face. Winnipeg number 51. Pony's declined. It's third down. Hardrick again. He got hit with one of these earlier in the game. And that's what Ryan Phillips did on that key second down. They'll decline that penalty, but they said, you know, we got to get up and play press. You get up on the line of scrimmage, your defensive backs, play man to man, and say, Zach, if you're going to throw it over top of us with all of us at the line of scrimmage, we're going to we're going to just give up that because that's that we got to take some chances and play aggressively. It worked for the Lions there. Shai Ross awaits this kick just inside his own 10. And Rhymes have some time to we make know, this thing close. We know Dominic Rhymes. I mean, last year he only played in eight games because he had an ankle injury, but he had over 400 yards. And you knew he was going to be a great target. But what a night he's had. I mean, it's been all Winnipeg on the field, but when they have got the ball, the Lions are using 19 effectively. And, boy, some of his burnham like catches, like this one right here, cutting inside. This baby laying out. Rourke up high and it's intercepted just inside the 40. Take it away and all the way back down the right sideline. And inside the 15, Donald Rutledge Jr. First interception of his CFL career could not have come at a better time. Well, overthrow is always a quarterback's nightmare because there's defensive backs there just waiting for the overthrow. And this time, Malcolm Thompson just playing deep in the middle. This is a, an accuracy issue. He comes up, and Rutledge makes the, makes the pick, but Thompson is in the middle, and that's... He comes up underneath. Maybe it was Nathan Rourke trying to get it over top of his hands. That was the accuracy problem and Rutledge back there again Richie Hall putting linebackers back in the deep outside half Bombers defense Makes the play again Rourke watching on Thinking about that last ball that just sailed a little bit high on him and Winnipeg now takes over on the BC 15 after a nice little return after the pick from Rutledge. Polaris, he's going to waste no time. Ellingson got him. Touchdown, Winnipeg. Greg Ellingson, third of the season. And a quick strike from Polaris. Sudden change, and Zach Kolaris knows again that very first play after a turnover is a big one to just take that 
momentum and go right after the touchdown. And this is Ellingson and a precise throw, keeping him in bounds. That throw just behind him kept him in bounds so he didn't go out both feet. You only need one. He got both down. And the Bombers add to the score after the Rourke interception on the overthrow. Polaris, three touchdown passes. Just six incompletions tonight. He's 21 and 27 for 259 and three touchdowns. Thank you all. And the extra point is gained left. A few years back, they moved the extra point back a little bit. It's not automatic anymore, as the Argos certainly know. But when you take a look at that corner route, beautiful little route after Richie Hall dialed up the interception on the overthrow. But watch, watch nice low angle from just the the outstanding player of this game, Zach Kolaris, and, and maybe this week. Not that every quarterback touchdown pass isn't a good throw, but his three throws tonight on his touchdown passes were yeah. perfect. Yeah, and some in real difficult circumstances where he was throwing from different angles, throwing on the run. But if, if I was voting for if I was voting for player of the week, number eight's the top of my ballot. This is against the BC Lions, and he, somehow he loves playing against them. How, how about that? Wow. Now Five almost. to one. Almost touchdown interception ratio. Woo. Might still tack on another 300-yard game here as well. He's 41 yards shy of that. And champ is still, still champ. 11 minutes <laughs> remaining. It champ sure looks still like it, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's just, I know that Richie Hall has given Nathan Rourke a lot to to digest as he goes back and looks at this at this video and this game over with. And there's many times that Rourke has gone to the sideline and looked at that tablet and just get frustrated and shaking his head a little bit. This return taken back Shot just Rossi outside the 30. And no further. He just dials up. He's got so many great athletes on that defense that he can play them in different positions. That last interception, yes, it was an overthrow and it wasn't an accurate throw from Rourke, but Donald Rutledge, the linebacker, had dropped into a four deep zone. He was on the inside quarter of a four deep zone. Rourke dropping back saying, why is the linebacker that deep? And then trying to hit Katoy and then just missed him over the top. First two games, no interceptions for Rourke. He's thrown four in his last two. Finds himself down by a bunch here. Has a completion, that'll go for a first down. And a lunge ahead from Katoy, who appears to be okay. Yeah, and you just keep keep working at it. I mean, you know, this this is the very beginning of a very bright future for number 12. Good decision here, drop it off to his big linebacker, or slot back. Now he goes to Whitehead. And Lucky Whitehead caught that, quickly ducked. It's just his second catch of the ball game. The BC guy Lions that's been contained. Started with Edmonton. Beat Edmonton convincingly in their first game, and then they had Toronto, another dominant win, and then Ottawa. So. Now well, they sort of rubber met the road here. Or Katoy again, first down again. And Katoy will take it down inside the 30, but he bobbles it. And it's scooped up by Houston. Winnipeg takes over another turnover for the Lions. Let's see who, who popped it out of there. That Rutledge again, all over the field. He gets the eye, he punches it with the left hand. Two turnovers for 38 back-to-back -back series. Rutledge came into the game tonight leading this team with 19 defensive tackles. So he has been all over, all over the field. I've been training camp with the Colts in 2020 in Arizona in 2021. Lands here with Winnipeg, and it's fit in nicely at the age of 25. Off to Oliveira, 
pushes it ahead, trying to strip it away from him, but he's able to hang on. Another valuable lesson for a young BC Lion team. Last week in Ottawa, they lost a turnover battle, came back and won. Pretty good offense and over 200 yards passing by Rourke after some big mistakes in the turnover department. But you play against championship teams, you play against the good teams in the league, you, you lose a turnover battle, you're going to lose the game, and, and they're down 3-0 here. Tonight. Bombers came into this game with a plus 7 in turnover ratio. Let's tack on 3 more to that. Looks after it very well thus far. Polaris going to his right. Yeah. Goes to Bailey. He's basically three. called that the entire way, and Bailey with his first catch. You know, and this and this team, you know, this team, this bomber team, they they worked so well together. And even though they had some changes, you know, they lost Kenny Lawler and had to, they brought in Greg Ellingson. But Greg Ellingson, a veteran who understands the game so well, I mean, their their scramble routes have been outstanding. Finding a way to get open when Zach Kalaris breaks the pocket or starts to negotiate the pocket with his legs. Winnipeg moved the ball very consistently all night, having to punt it away just three times. Oliveira, pretty nice push ahead. This offensive line has done an excellent job getting a ground attack going that had kind of been stuck in neutral despite a 4-0 start. Yeah, you know, I, I I think that really was a difference maker tonight. That's That offensive line set the tone in the first quarter really did with those great runs on first down getting six seven eight yards it was it reminded me of the last two years and and they really set the table for Zach to go to work but Zach Kolaris has been just dynamite brilliant as a matter of fact tonight. 276 yards passing for number eight in white back on a few more as he goes back over the middle to Schoen again and that will put him well over 110 yards on the evening again when you're when you're moving like Zach moves whether it's retreating or side to side whether it's side to side or when you're moving you have a different angle you don't throw on time you don't throw with that first step and open it up your hips and your shoulders to, to rotate into the throws Zach has done that so well and that's what it reminded me of Doug Flutie he could throw it from any position his body happened to be in at the time. In fact, he even tweeted about this game tonight. You know, Doug was watching down in the States. People excited for it, no doubt about that. And it's the back to back champs who have made a statement here this evening. These two teams will play two more times, but not until the very end of the season. I think they played twice over the final three weeks. Both of Winnipeg's last two games are against the BC Lions. So it'll be interesting to see where the standings sit when they clash again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Calgary Stampeders are kind of, they're waiting, they're waiting for next week. Why, well, that's interesting. We talk about the <laughs> Battle of El and Beatons tonight. Well, next Friday, next Friday, Calgary, Winnipeg. Guess what? A another battle heavyweight, of unbeaten, another yeah. heavyweight bout. <laughs> Calgary's looking good, man. Well, they're coming off a huge, huge game on Thursday. Procedure, Winnipeg number 51. Five yard penalty remains second down. Hardrick caught on that one. And there will be two veterans going at it there. I mean, that's that's Zach who will be coming off his best game of the season. And I think one of the best games I've covered of, of Zach Kolaris and the way he's thrown the ball from all the different arm angles that he's been able to achieve. Just great accuracy tonight. And 43 points on the board, but Bo Levi Mitchell after that last game, I was watching you guys call that game. He looks like he's back. Well, they're coming in with over a 40-point game themselves, so next Friday should be a big one. Kolaris, look at this little pop to his right. Eventually, we'll just throw it away as they brought that pressure again, but they couldn't get to him. Very elusive tonight. 
is Zach Kolaris. Yeah, and I, I want to be, you know, clear, like, there was only one Doug Flutie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's thinking, did Suter just compare him to Flutie? You're yeah. just saying no. there's some Flutie tendencies yes, there Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah it was, it was Flutie-like in a lot of the things he did tonight. Well, that being said, he's back-to-back -back Great Cup champ in the reigning MLP, so yeah. that's yeah. a pretty good run. His resume is solid. Let's put it that way. And we showed you his win-loss record as the leader of this team. Legio has not missed yet this year. This one from 43. Left hash to remain perfect. Ooh, I jinxed him. Off the uprights. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> to Mark Legio, I feel awful. Excellent season for him, does continue. Bombers in full control tonight. For more on that, let's send it down to Blake Price. Guys, in a game like this, needless to say, there will be two different tones along the sideline here, but it's quite remarkable in the case of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It started early in the second half, the singing, the dancing, and after that last Ellington touchdown, a turn and a wave to the crowd from a couple of members of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. There's been some critique of how they got to 4 0 in their strength of schedule, but in this defeat of a, an undefeated Lions team, the Bombers may have declared that the Grey Cup Championship once again will go through them. Certainly sending a statement tonight. Jefferson there getting to that ball. O'Connor now in the game at quarterback for the BC Lions. Another knockdown, though, by Willie Jefferson is Michael O'Connor, the UBC. Vanier Cup champion from 2015 gets a chance, former Calgary Stampeder. And, it, you know, it's just to make sure that Nathan Rourke stays healthy and that Michael O'Connor gets, you know, some valuable reps in case they need him sometime down the road. He has some time here, and he's got Katoy. Katoy avoided a hit from Nichols and then was taken down from behind so another challenge another different situation and and another journey that Mike uh, that Nathan Rourke is gonna have to go on he'll he'll finish 16 to 25 for 278 the two interceptions had two last week and bounced back to win it not this time against the defending champ so he's got a this will be the first time he comes back after a loss as the Lions franchise player O'Connor with a Another completion goes back to Katoy again. I always say that that there's you know different boxes that you got to check when you get a new a new quarterback and you're trying to evaluate is he going to be the real deal or not. And I think everybody watching uh, Nathan Rourke is saying he's the real deal, no question. Now he's going to go through some highs and lows. Tonight was a low. One of the biggest tests that he'll face here against Winnipeg. This defense, and, you know, an interception on their first. They were moving the ball well in a response after that touchdown early. Yeah. And then Jeff Coat with an interception and kind of just got Winnipeg going, didn't it? Yeah. That first, that first drive just snuffed out, and then Zach Kolaris took it the distance and hit Greg Ellingson on the corner route, and that that was 14 nothing because of Jerrion Grant's opening kickoff return for a touchdown. So BC Lions chasing it tonight. From the very first play of the game. O'Connor. Out of the pocket. Up for grabs, and that's going to be intercepted just outside the 50. And that'll be brought back down the right side and taken inside the 30 by Demario Houston. Start to finish. Dominance by the Bombers on both sides of the ball. Houston this time coming up with it. Week six coming up on TSN. We'll start on Thursday night football presented by 7-Eleven. Touchdown Atlantic on Saturday <laughs> and Friday night football. The unbeaten Bombers, I know. I know. unbeaten Stamps. I know, there's there's big games all week next week, <laughs> but I'm, I'm excited about that one right there because that one is the preview to a 10th team in that region in our country, in Atlantic Canada. That's exciting, isn't it? Come on, we got to make that happen. Drew Brown in the game. He'll hand it off to Augustine, who takes it right up the middle. The last three 
Lions possessions ended with an interception, a fumble, and an interception. And it doesn't matter if you're playing the champs or anybody else. That's not a recipe for success as we get a look at Brown, who came up big early in the season. Yeah, when Zach Kolaris was taken out of a game by the spotters, felt that he had a head injury, that he had to sit out a few plays, and Brown came in and finished it. Big drive for a game-winning field goal. That's what these reps are important for, for both Michael O'Connor and Drew Brown, as game is decided and they're still out there competing. Valuable reps. Kolaris finishes just shy of his second 300-yard game of the year. Now Brown's going to take off. A little hesitation and a slide at the 25 with a buck 42 on the clock. I, you know, but I so think it can happen out in Atlanta, Canada. I really do. I, I think, you know, I've been out there a couple times in Halifax. And just, just a good buzz. Just great buzz. The, the tickets for this game this weekend sold out in, you know, minutes. They probably could have sold it three times. It's limited size of the stadium, of course, to, to play this game. But, you know, I, if they could somehow work on getting the stadium out there and getting that, that ownership group back engaged, and I know they are. Mm -hmm. They already are. But it's, be it's been discussed for so long, right? I really think it's going to happen in our lifetime. I, I really do. In the next five to seven. That's what you're saying. The overall prediction. At? Five oh, to boy. seven. <laughs> yeah, to put it in the middle at five and a half or six and a half. This is how it works. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, let's make it let's make it six and a half. All right, I'll take the under. Love it. Leggy O. Oh. Pulls that one to wide left as well. Take it out here. And they are going to bring it back. Oh, no. of the end zone. Shy Ross and Leggy O misses a couple here late. Put some of the D line on the on the field goal protection unit. And speaking of Eastern Canada, Katie, a product, Jake Thomas. He's a guy who yeah. made the big tackle right on the one yard line. Ten year guy with the bombers. Going to your stomping grounds, Jake. <laughs> we'll get it to Butler. A guy that was kept quiet tonight. One of the yeah. biggest dual threats so far this season in the league, and Bombers did a job on Butler this evening. Well, Casey Sales and Jake Thomas, we didn't point it out the, tonight as much as we have in the past, but when you're controlling the interior of the line, and the run game has nothing. That's how you talk an offensive coordinator out of running the ball. Butler just 14 yards on the ground, 21 through the air. He was combined over 300 coming in. I got luck, here, man. Hell yeah. As that'll be enough for a first down but for the what, Lions late in this one. But what a game for the champs. I mean, when when you when you put 43 on the board, there's some game balls, there's some touchdown <laughs> balls that have to be sorted out and make sure those tape that tape doesn't come off because Got interceptions in there. You got touchdowns in there. You got Zach Kolaris, who's brilliant tonight. Every aspect of this game dominated by Winnipeg. Clock to 46 seconds. And sending 46. a message maybe to the Calgary Stampeders that they'll be ready for them next Friday night back at IG Field. Look at those two leaders, though. They got 43 on the board, and those two leaders of this team are saying, yeah, another day at the office. Went to work. It was a different journey than last week in Toronto, but same result, got the job done. O'Shea has told us multiple times, completion to Butler, but there was a flag back by O'Connor. But O'Shea has told us multiple times that the culture of this team is with its leadership group, right? And yeah. we just saw Holding a good shot of the two. BC number 54. Half well, the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, early in the season when their offensive line wasn't playing at, at the standard they wanted to be playing at, I asked M Michael O'Shea, I said, you know, what do you say to them? How, what, what do you go in and say? He said, no, they'll handle it. And then that's all you need to hear. He, he does make his job sound really easy, doesn't he? <laughs> he always does to well, us. Well, he had to build that. He had to bring the right guys in, and he had to put that all together in the staff and the coaching staff and everything. And then once that's established, then it, it is up to them. Well, for some markets where teams are struggling this year, Winnipeg's a good example. You don't turn things around 
immediately. O'Shea came in, started building the culture, started bringing a roster together, and eventually it paid off, and now here they sit as the most dominant team in the league for quite some time. Yeah, absolutely, and other teams have taken a different direction and making changes, but Michael O'Shea lost, and you know, they had losing records in his first couple of years. That first year was a real tough one, but no one panicked, kept it together, put the right people in the room, and then empower them to lead it. What about BC? They're on a bye next week again. Good thing or bad thing coming off a game like no, this? this is good. Yeah, they can regroup. They can take a long look at what went wrong, some of the mistakes, and, you know, against playing against the championship team, you, you, this is, this is stuff that he hasn't seen. Nathan Rourke has not seen some of the Richie Alt. Now, I know we watch it on video, but there's always wrinkles. You know, we've seen Adam Big Hill, for instance, drop into the deep yep. middle like a DB. I can't remember in recent history Rutledge doing it. So, you know, I mean, again, Richie Hall mixing things up and adding little wrinkles that Nathan Rourke now can learn from. Butler, last play of the game, will run out of bounds. And you described it as a heavyweight tilt off the top, and I guess the challenger is down for the count. He's down for the count. The champs remain champs. And Zach Kalaris put together just a brilliant outing. A convincing victory for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers tonight. 43-22, your final. Zach Kolaris, 288 yards, three touchdown passes. Defense, special teams doing it all tonight for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. As a battle of a beaten ends with the Bombers bursting the BC bubble on their way to a 5-0 start. Started 5-0 in 2019 and went on to win it all. Another game you watch tonight on TSN, a battle of undefeated teams in the CFL. BC and Winnipeg, Canadian quarterback Nathan Rourke. He's been the talk of the CFL so far, but it was special teams stealing the show early in this one. Inside his own 15, near side of the field, and an opportunity for some fireworks early. Grant down to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and he's going to take it all the way home to start the football game. Get out of here. Janarian Grant untouched for 97 and a touchdown. Well, that's a great start for the Bombers. They're up 7-zip. Rourke facing a stiff test here against the two-time defending Grey Cup champs. Look at Jackson Jeffcoat. Drops back into coverage. Rourke did not see that. Jeffcoat with the easy interception as Rourke's taking a look on the tablet. Ensuing drive. Zach Kalaros under pressure. Spots Dalton shown in the end zone. 12-yard score. The Bombers up 21-0 after the opening quarter. So the Lions, a lot of work to do. Rourke leads the league with nine touchdown passes this season. Second quarter, all kinds of time and showing off the arm. This is a strike to Josh Pearson, 66 yards. BC makes it 24-7. After the Bombers punt did, the Lions driving again. This time Rourke airs it out for Dominique Rimes. 36-yard score. The Lions down just 13 at the break. A lot of focus on Rourke. Alaro saying, don't forget about me. Third quarter, look at him falling down. Still manages to find Schoen along the sideline. What a play to keep that drive alive. Same drive, Kalaros spins away from a defender and finds Schoen again. His second touchdown of the night made it 37-14. Bombers, it was Winnipeg putting on a clinic against the 3-0, now 3-1 BC Lions, but what a, a performance by the two-time Grey Cup champs. Gennarian Grant's opening kickoff touchdown, it was the fifth return touchdown so far this season. There were nine all of last campaign as Greg Ellingson also extends his catch streak to 75 games. He also moves into 40th place on the all-time receiving list. We'll have more on this game as Sports Center continues. For now, we're going to step aside. We'll be back in two minutes from now. See, let's hear from Zach Kalaros after his Bombers move to 5-0. and We talked about it before the game, but now that it's over, does it mean a little extra to beat an undefeated team and send a message in the division? Uh, it's just another week for us, you know. Uh, that's how we approached it. Um, you know, obviously you play to win the game, and, uh, you know, we're happy to get out of here with one. You got some big turnovers from your defense and then capitalized. Uh, how nice is it to convert those turnovers? 
Yeah, engineering returning the kick to start the game, too, gives a, a big momentum swing. Uh, our defense has been doing that all season long, and, uh, you know, for us offensively, it was nice to execute, score some touchdowns, and uh, contribute more than we have been. If there was uh, maybe a weakness in the armor here uh, to start the season, the running game hadn't been going like gangbusters. You got some support there, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought, you know, I said it those guys during the game, too. Like, they really set the tone for us, and uh, we're really pushing the piles around. You know, Johnny, Brady, uh, Greg, I was called him Night, Nighthawk, and, uh, yeah, he did a great job, too. So uh, it always starts up front. They did a great job. Mikey Mills coming in, too, when we, when we had him in there. Um, it was awesome. Thanks for this. Thanks, man. Take care. Quite the clinic put on by the two-time champs doubling up the Lions on this night, humbling them for the first time this season as you see the Lions falling to 3-1. and one. It's a pretty decent game, though, still from uh, Nathan Rourke. 278 yards, three touchdowns. Yes, he had the two interceptions, but he'll learn. He'll grow from this. Let's hear what the panel has to say as we send it over to Farhan Lalji. Thank you very much. I'm not sure any of us saw that one coming that way, uh, along with Davis Sanchez, Matt Dunnigan, and Milt Stiegel. Guys, when you looked at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and their 4-0 record coming into this game, statistically, other than scoring defense, they were really ordinary. They right. looked very right. beatable. But tonight, their best performance of the year in all three phases, completely dominant, Matt, starting with the quarterback. Yeah, yeah starting with the quarterback, but he got a little help from the special teams engineering and Grant taking it to the house and, and uh, just punched VC right in the mouth. And from there, the, Zach Calero said, hold on there, young buck. Uh, the reigning MOP is in the house, and he played like it tonight. He was absolutely phenomenal, just spotting the ball all over the football field. 80% completion on the Night. And his favorite tar was, uh, target was that man right there, Dalton Schoen. Just absolutely majestic out there. Just making people miss, buying time. Suits talked about his arm angles, and you see it all over the place, man. He just, watch him drop this one down there. That's from his hip. and throws a strike to Dalton in the back of the end zone. Uh, they use the words Flutie-esque, and uh, I've used that several times covering Zach Claris while he plays the game because he reminds me a lot of him, puts a lot of pressure on the defense because of his decision-making, his calmness in the pocket, and, and his ability to scramble and make people miss, and he doesn't scramble to run. He scrambles to throw the football, and right. he did an right. excellent job of that tonight and wore out the BC Lions defense. Yes, he did. Uh, Flutie, yes, they said it on the broadcast. It was, it was good because it's a uh, uh, guy that was a nemesis of yeah. you guys playing. Yes. Uh, Seven years I played <laughs> against him. <today. laughs> a, a teammate of mine, and it's funny. So when you looked at the defense uh, of the BC Lions, really difficult for them to come back in this game. Down 21, like you said. Mm -hmm. The kick return, mm -hmm. uh, down 21. And then the fact that Zach was playing the way he was. Right, the fact right. that it was almost impossible. I thought, really, the BC's defense and Ryan Phillips had a pretty good plan and were pretty good. But mm -hmm. they could not get Zach down. Mm -hmm. right. You couldn't get Zach down. So when you're down, uh, you're trying to mount a comeback, and you can't get the quarterback on the ground. He's making throws from every angle. Mm -hmm. Really difficult. That's the best. This last two games, the best I've seen him play. Yeah, and, and you talk about, you look at Winnipeg's formula for success the last two seasons. It's been what? Dominant Run the, the ball, ball yeah. offense, but what they do better than anyone is play that great defense. And coming into this game, you think about it, Nathan Rohr hadn't been touched much. He hadn't been pressured much. Well, these Winnipeg Blue Bombers had a different story. And it started on that first drive. You saw the Jackson Jeff cold interception. Willie Jefferson was all in his grill. They forced him to, to, to two interceptions. Uh, this was a Winnipeg defense that a lot of people were waiting to see. And, you know, Richie Hall devised a great plan. And, and as Farhan, we were talking about it, he did it in a short period of time. They had, what, one day of real practice. They had to walk through. Then they had to fly halfway across the country. But when you have the veterans like they have, the Big Hills and the Jeff Coats and the Willie Jefferson, those guys, they know how to play. They don't need much time to practice. So great performance by these Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Still nice to see Nathan Rourke get some plays in, but these Winnipeg Blue Bombers showed you that they're still the, at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Well, and if this first battle of unbeatens didn't necessarily live up to the hype, guess what? We get to do it again next week. 5-0 <laughs> and o Winnipeg against 4-0 and o Calgary in Winnipeg Friday night. Matt will be there on the call. We look forward to that one. Yes, week five is in the book. So week six kicks off Thursday night with the Elks taking on the Alouettes. That's at 7 Eastern. Stamps visiting the Bombers, as Farhan just mentioned, on Friday Night Football concludes with a doubleheader beginning with the Riders taking on the Argos in the touchdown Atlantic game. Nice. That's followed by the Red Hashtag Blacks. And Wolfville. There you go. That's right. <laughs> and it all begins 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Saturday.